Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this is going to be doctrine part three, I think. Yeah, part three. So let's go to Luke chapter two. Um, this is going to be the New Testament. I'm pretty much done with the Old Testament's uh, doctrine. Now we're going to look at the New Testament. Matter of fact, let's look at the life of Christ. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. So evidently this is some kind of a census and they're going to have everybody pay for the privilege of living in under Roman occupation. Isn't that usually how the way it works? Oh yeah. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. So evidently you had to go to, you you know, where you were born. Because uh, other people would know who was born there. And um, I guess they did this so that they could figure out who was trying to avoid paying the tax you know so it's kind of hard to uh, when uh, you go to a town and pretty much you know a lot of people know everybody so during hitler's germany they used the uh, post office to spy on people because after all the post the postal workers knew everybody right everybody on their route so i don't know verse 4 and joseph also went up went up from galilee out of the city of nazareth into judea unto the city of david which is called bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of david you know king david you know the guy that uh uh, helped uh, Goliath get stoned. Yeah. Verse 5. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now what's a manger? Basically a barn. So Jesus was born in a barn. Oh boy. The creator of heaven and earth was born in a barn. Left heaven to come to earth to be a human sacrifice for you and me it makes you wonder. You know, this is the reason why people that reject the um, offer of gift, the gift from God of grace and mercy, why the Lord's going to be so harsh on them. I mean, all this was for an example unto us. Now, the deal is this. So, Jesus left heaven, was born into a human body to pretty much as an example unto us to show us, you know, as an example. Was he born in a palace? No, he was born in a manger. 
Paul said that in whatever state we are in, and we're not talking about, you know, being in Texas or New York or California or Florida. No, in whatever state you are in, as long as you got food and clothing to be, you know, content. And that's the Bob paraphrase, but yeah. We're supposed to be content with our lot in life. So, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Inn is just a, you know, a motel, a hotel or motel, right? Verse 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, was Jesus born on December 25th? Uh, no, because the shepherds would not be in the field. They'd be freezing if that was the case, you know, because it gets cold, especially uh, uh, in a desert conditions at night. It, in winter, it gets cold. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Jesus was probably born in one of the fall festivals. Perhaps the Feast of Tabernacles. That's what a lot of people think, and it wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, he died on Passover, so. But it certainly wasn't December 25th. No. Verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. You know, tidings. I'm bringing you good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Hmm. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace Good will toward men. You know, heavenly hosts, there's a bunch of angels praising God. I don't know if they were singing or not, but wouldn't surprise me. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, into heaven, you know, not the, uh, not the, Revelation 12 angels that were cast out of heaven. No, no, these are the ones that are in heaven. You know, the, the Revelation 12 angels were cast out of heaven. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, they got a different, they got a different residence. They had to get a change of address from the post office. Yeah. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said, one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Very interesting. Let's go to the Old Testament real quick. Micah. Now, Micah is one of the minor prophets, uh, part of the Old Testament. It's those little tiny books just before the New Testament. And they're called minor, not because of the importance of the message, but rather because of the size. Micah chapter 5, in verse 1. Now, when the wise men came to uh, Herod, Herod had asked the uh, scribes, or the people in the temple, uh, where is it that Christ would be born? And they said, oh, Bethlehem. So this is right out of, 
Yeah, the Old Testament. See, they knew. They knew that one day a Messiah would come, a Christ. Micah 5, verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. Ruler in Israel. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. How can the ruler be from old, from everlasting? Simple. He was a son of God. Oh, yeah. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God, and they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Hmm. Verse 5. And this man shall be the peace. Oh, Christ is called the Prince of Peace, right? When the Assyrian shall come into our land. Now, remember, the kingdom of uh, Israel was divided in the days of Solomon's son. You have the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Different land areas, different capitals, different kings. The Assyrians came in and took northern Israel captive. They also invaded Judah and took some of the cities of Judah captive. But when they came to Jerusalem, uh, an angel of the Lord smote them, struck them down dead. Oh, yeah. And that was the end of that in uh, siege. Yeah, they had surrounded Jerusalem, and uh, I think, yeah, everybody was starving to death. But the Lord protected Jerusalem for his servant David's sake. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother study. I think that's in Kings and Chronicles. Yeah. Kings and Chronicles. You can read about it. Syrians took a lot of the no, Syrians took some of the cities of Judah or towns, whatever. They took some of them. So part of Judah was taken with Israel. But the capital city, Jerusalem, nope, didn't happen. That didn't happen until a number of years later. I'm not sure how many, but the uh, Babylonians uh, came in and took Jerusalem and then carried everybody off to Babylon. And you can read about that in Jeremiah. And you can read about that in the book of Daniel. So, verse 6. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod. Now, Nimrod supposedly... Uh, created Babel or Babel Tower of Babel Tower of Babel and supposedly it was Babylon so the city of Babylon and the country of Babylon and they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod in the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders. 
And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many peoples, as a dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for men, nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob, now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, I and mean, it's interchangeable. I, you know, Jacob and Israel, interchangeable. They're synonyms, pretty much. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles, the nations, in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. All right, verse 9. Vine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, you know, the enemies, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. Uh, he's talking to Judah here. Why? Because they're a bunch of, they're acting like a bunch of satanic heathens. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strong, strongholds. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand. And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Basically false prophets, right? The graven images also will I cut off. You know, idols. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. Um... Uh, Groves of trees, you know, the, they were like nature worshipers. Uh, even today, New Agers and witches uh, say the, the oak is sacred. The sacred oak. I don't think so. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. You know, that was where they would, you know, they wouldn't do their little satanic sacrifices in the city. No, they, they would sacrifice children out in the in the woods yeah because they didn't want somebody to get upset and uh take care of business if you catch my drift you know that's one of the reasons why um uh, people treated the native people of the Americas the way that they did was because they saw their religious practices and were not exactly pleased or impressed. So they dealt with it accordingly. And I will pluck thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Oh boy. The Lord is not pleased. All right, let's uh, let's go back to Luke chapter 2. Verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. Okay, the shepherds that were in the, the field, right? The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now remember, there was a, uh, I think a couple hundred years had passed from the time of the Old Testament up un unto the birth of Christ. I, I couldn't tell you the exact timeline. You could look it up, you know, but it's, you know, we're not talking a couple of years. We're talking... Uh, let me see. 
All right, so according to scholars, it's around 120 years from the time Israel was northern Israel was taken into captivity uh, until the Babylonian invasion of Jerusalem. So, you know, they were warned. Jerusalem was warned. Uh, the Lord's prophets told the people in Jerusalem that uh, northern Israel was being carried off into captivity as punishment for their wickedness. But did they listen? No. So about 120 or so years later, uh, Jerusalem was carried off to Babylon. And then from the time of the Old Testament, the last book of the Old Testament until the coming of Christ was approximately 400 years depending upon who you talk to. That's a long time for the Lord to be silent. 400 years. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, back to Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 15. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. So, I don't know how big Bethlehem was, but they knew that he was in a manger. Christ, that is. So, how many mangers or barns are there? You know, they probably, you know, was checking each one until they found the right, the right one. So, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I just remember, Gabriel had come to Mary and told her that she's going to have a baby. And she's like, well, wait a minute. How's this, how can this be? I, I, I've never known a man. And she was told, uh, well, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow thee. And uh, Gabriel even told her to name him Jesus. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, can you imagine some of the thoughts going through Mary's mind? And then the shepherds show up and say, hey, uh, a bunch of angels told us you were here. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know? And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, and by the way, um, uh, circumcision was to be performed. It was an Old Testament ritual. And it was to be performed on the eighth day. And uh, that's when the blood clotting capabilities of a child kicks in after a few days. You know, that's why they don't do it right out of the womb because the blood clotting capabilities don't happen. And if they circumcised them, Immediately, they'd probably bleed to death. So, yeah. I learned that from medical stuff. Yeah. Bob, you're crazy. You've been reading, studying too much, you know? It's like uh, Festus told Paul. Paul, uh, much learning doth make you mad. You're beside yourself. Well, I don't, I can't compare myself to Paul, but yeah turn off your tv you'll learn something and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child his name was called jesus jesus do you know that every person that uses yeshua is denying the new testament every single one of them they're denying the new testament they're denying the greek new testament 
Now, I'm not saying they're deceivers, but they're probably deceived at the very least if they're not deceivers outright. Think about it. No, oh, his real name's Yeshua. Uh, well, I don't know what Bible you're reading, but mine says Jesus. And the Bible says not to pay any attention. Do not heed the you wish fables. Yeah. Uh, you as in with a J. Yeah. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Oh, yeah. Yep. There you go. I think I'd rather listen to my Bible than to uh, you wish fables. But hey, that's just me. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, was were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Uh, there was a uh, when a woman gave birth, she was considered uh, ritually, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure if this is the right word, impure, but they gave them, it was basically to give the body time to heal itself. So you would, yeah, something along those lines. Ladies would know far more about this than I do. Uh, da, 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 doom. Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. The firstborn son was to be dedicated to the Lord. Oh boy, I don't know how that works in my case, but I was the firstborn son. And I'm not saying I'm holy by no means. But I guess the Lord dedicated me. I don't know. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For, thy, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, or nations, and the glory of thy people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Do you know some of the modern Bibles say that his father and his mother marveled at those things? Was Joseph Jesus' father? Only in a satanic NIV. Which is why I tell everybody, stick with the King James. Was Joseph the father of Jesus? Uh, no. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. What do you mean fall? Fall down dead, but rising again. Simeon knew there would be a resurrection. The, the, the dead, well, those that are dead in the body, they're going to be raised again in new bodies. Some people unto the resurrection of life, others to the resurrection of of damnation 
you don't want to be there. Absolutely no. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Were there people that spoke against Jesus? Absolutely. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy uh, own soul also, and the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Verse 36. All right, let's see. Verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. Did you know there were female prophets in the Bible? There was another one called Deborah. Uh, let's see. She was in, uh, I think, in, in the book of Judges. I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah. So there was at least two. I think there was three, but I can't remember the third one. So, so when Paul said that uh, he would suffer not a woman to teach, uh, he's definitely not talking about Anna or Deborah. Deborah was a judge, a ruler in Israel, and a prophetess. Uh, can you imagine being married to her? I mean, really? So, I don't know. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. Uh, that's the Greek rendering of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. So you're talking 84 years. So 84 plus how old was she when she got married? You know, maybe 15, 16 lived with him for seven. I mean, she must have been like way up there in age, like in the 90s, way up. I mean, close to 100, maybe more than 100. I don't know. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Boy, that's... uh. Fasting and prayers, people. Fasting and prayers. And yes, I'm a hypocrite because I don't fast like I should. Do you know there's one day every year where we're commanded, uh, well, uh, when Israel was commanded to fast, it was the Day of Atonement. Yeah, at one mint with God. To atone for our sins, which means, you know, to pay, help pay for them. Of course, we can't pay for them because we don't have the capability. But yeah, look it up. Uh, Day of Atonement. The uh, you, you wish people call it uh, Yom Kippur. Uh, you should you should read about their rituals that they do. Yeah. Yeah, they make a pr they t they tell God that they have no intention of keeping any of their promises for the year. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Hey God, uh yeah, I know I'm going to uh make a promise to pay my employees, but I'm not going to do it. And I'm telling you in advance. Yeah, it's sort of like uh when they put out movies and uh, tell us in advance what they plan on doing to us. I, I, you know, they like to brag about it. Yeah. Tch. Fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned unto Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. 
Now the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now a lot of people, uh, the reason the Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God is because, you know, Jesus prayed to God the Father, and of course they don't accept the Bible. But in Psalms 2.7, Listen to this. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Who's speaking here? The Lord. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. God has a son. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, Muslims don't believe that. Neither do the uh, you wish people. So, yeah. But I do. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, you got to remember, Christ had a dual nature. He was the Son of God, and he was born in the flesh, just like all of us are. Verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. See, under the law, there was three times a year when everybody, every male, was supposed to present themselves unto the Lord. Uh, Passover was one of them. I can't remember the other ones. I'd have to look it up. You know, like I say, I don't claim to be an expert. I know the Old Testament fairly well, but uh, there's a lot of laws in the book of Leviticus. Yeah. Uh, did you know that soldiers were supposed to pay a ransom, a piece of silver, every... Uh, I'm not sure if it's every year, but at least one time. Yeah, all kinds of weird, obscure laws. Yeah, when you listen to these Hebrew Roots people, that's the kind of stuff they teach. They don't teach the grace of God, and they don't preach a lot of Jesus. No, they, they preach all these obscure little laws and stuff, and they want to dazzle the, the churchgoers with their knowledge of the law. <sighs> You know, now, if you don't know what a Pharisee is, a Pharisee is of the you wish persuasion. It's a denomination of them. You know, like in the Christians, you got the Methodists and the Lutherans and the, you know, Baptists and whatever. So, yeah. But Jesus is talking to them in Luke chapter 11. Verse 39, he says, And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the club, cup. You make the outside of the cup clean and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms, you know, charity, of all things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. Oh yeah, you, you, you give tithes, you follow the law, but when it comes to honest judgment and the love of God, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You know, you, you should be judging rightfully and telling people the love of God instead of, oh, well, here we got a tithe of mint, you know, and your herbs and your fruit and vegetables. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
boy, he used that word a lot, speaking to uh, you-know-who. For ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. Now these are not lawyers like in America today. These are doctors of the law. Very specialized. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres, the graves, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them, just like you're going to kill Christ. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye built their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them shall uh, some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. And you got people who say, "Oh, mystery Babylon in the old in the New Testament Revelation uh, kills the prophets." Oh, that's that's Rome. Nowhere does the Bible say that Rome kills the prophets. Nowhere, because they work for the you know who's and want to divert. It's what they call a wild goose chase. You're looking in the wrong direction, buddy boy, if you think it's Rome. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel. Who killed Abel? Cain. Cain. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias. And I believe that is the ba uh, John the Baptist's father that they killed which perished between the altar and the temple. Do you know they killed him inside the temple? They murdered John the Baptist's father in the temple while he was performing his duties, probably. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, Oh, yeah, the, the, you know, they're not going into heaven. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things. They were trying to get him to say something that they could haul him off and get him killed for. Laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth, that they might accuse him. But ain't going to happen because Jesus is too smart for him. All right. Uh, all right. Back to Luke chapter 2. All right. Luke 2 chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 40. And the child, Christ, grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph, Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Now you got to realize this is probably a, a caravan, you know, and y you know, y you went in groups and reason being, if it was just a single family, I mean, they were concerned about robbers and stuff, but you know, if you had a caravan of, 
you know, maybe 50 people, you know, they packed everything up. Jesus could have been sitting around, packed up, ready to go, and then, you know, left and went back. I don't know if that's what happened. I'm just saying. And then parents, you know, uh, well, Mary and Joseph would have been uh, assuming that he was, you know, he's around somewhere, you know. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. So here it is, they're with family and friends, right? And when they found him not, so here it is, they're looking for him, and uh, they can't find him. And they, And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Where did that kid go? And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hear, hearing them and asking them questions. All right, so here it is. Jesus is in the temple. He's sitting in the middle of, the, of all these doctors. He's listening to them and he's asking them questions. And when Jesus asks you a question, <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Ah, okay. You know, every time somebody asks Jesus a question, um, if they were doing bad things, they didn't like his answers. So, yeah. And he'd ask questions that people couldn't answer. Uh, that would make an interesting study right there. Uh, Jesus' questions and answers. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, the, you know, Mary and Joseph, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Yeah, we've been worried sick about you. We've been looking all three days for you. And he, Jesus, said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Well, not, not Joseph's business. No, God the Father. I'm going to be, I'm about my father's business. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. At least till later, when uh, he exposed people's hypocrisies, then they didn't particularly care for him too much. Can you imagine what these uh, doctors of the law? Now I don't know if you understand uh, today. If you want, if if you want a doctorate degree from a university, you go to, you go to university for four years. You get a bachelor's. Two more years, you get a master's. Two more years and you get a doctorate. That is a minimum of eight years of study. A doctor of the law was somebody that knew their stuff. I mean, they knew their stuff. They knew the Bible pretty well. They may not apply it properly, but they knew it fairly well. All right. All right, let's get going here. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is teaching a sermon. Judge not that ye be not judged. Boy, I'll tell you what, you hear that a lot, don't you? Especially those in the gross sin crowd. You know, the uh, places like San Francisco, 
Well, judge not, lest ye be judged. Uh, the Bible also teaches we're supposed to judge righteous judgment. You know, if you're uh, sitting there with a cigarette in your hand and you're judging somebody because they're, they drink too much, you know, that's the kind of judgment we shouldn't be judging. Or you're cheating on your wife or husband and you're saying, oh, that person over there, he's a thief. He's no good. You know, and yeah, not that. That's that's not it. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Okay, uh, you got a splinter in your brother's eye, but you got a log in your eye, right? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. You ever heard of a, a beam of lumber? Uh, I'm not sure that's exactly the way it should be interpreted, but, you know, a beam, a concrete beam, uh, you know, they use beams, wooden beams on roof, uh, ceilings to hold the roof up. Yeah, so here it is. This guy's got a splinter, but you got a whole log. Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Ooh, doggy! Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Huh, what are dogs? Well, if you want to know, uh, you know, Jesus is not saying uh, don't give the holy things to four-legged animals with a tail, uh, that when you come home after being gone all day, it's wagging its tail jumping up on you because they love you. Uh, no, they're talking about two-legged dogs. And the, def the uh, explanation is found in Deuteronomy chapter 23, and verse 17. There shall be no whore, no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, See, this is called parallelism. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. When they come to the temple and the house of the Lord and want to throw money in the temple or the house of the Lord asking for uh, a for asking God for something. Don't take the money from a prostitute and don't take the money from a so dumb ite. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both of these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Mm. Let's go back to Matthew 7. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. You get it? Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, two-legged swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Yeah, you give them the holy things of God, they'll trample them under their feet, they'll turn and they'll rip you to pieces. I don't know if you know it, but wild boars, swine, they got sharp teeth and they will rip you to pieces. 
Uh, if you don't understand that, watch the uh, Old Yeller where Old Yeller gets ripped to pieces by the swine. Yeah, Disney, right? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. They'll turn against you and rip you to pieces. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom, if he, his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Yeah, what's the law and the prophets? To do unto others as they would do unto you, right? The golden rule. And not the golden rule like uh, the rich people. Oh, I own all the gold, so I make the rules. That's their golden rule. In Matthew 22:36, 36, someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment? I know I've beat this horse to death, but we're going to beat it one more time. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But if you listen to the Hebrew Roots people, they want you to keep 600 and some odd laws. Well, I heard somebody counted them. I never counted them, but let's just say it's hundreds of them. Love thy neighbor. Hopefully we... You know, we don't we don't have a bunch of Satanists as neighbors. You know, I I think you should move. Because you got Satanists for neighbors. Uh don't be surprised around Halloween your children disappear. Yeah. Uh let's see. Verse 13. Matthew 7. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. You ever heard of the straight and narrow? That's where you want to be. The straight and narrow. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few, few, there be that find it. Beware of false prophets. You want to see false prophets? Turn on TBN. Turn on your TV. You want to see false prophets. If they're on TV, you know they're a bunch of frauds. Generally. There might be a couple of exceptions, but they're not on prime time. I'll guarantee you that. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Yeah, by their works, their actions. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a tr corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good few fruit is hewn down it's cut down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven 
You want to get into heaven? Do the will of the Father. But I don't know what the will of the Father is. Find out. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh, yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses, they prophesied in the Lord's name. And in thy name have cast out devils. Uh, the priests, Catholic priests, I don't know. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Yeah, we were the Catholic Charities, and we were, uh, you know, helping the orphans and the homeless and whatever. I don't know. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Probably the four scariest words you'd ever hear in your life. Jesus saying, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whatsoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Remember the previous lesson we did? The rock is Christ. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a, a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Ah, I knew that doctrine was in there somewhere. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Jesus taught them in the spirit, of the, the, the spirit of the law. But the scribes taught by the letter of the law. Big difference. So, I hope you enjoy this lesson. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.